What's going on guys? Today we're going to be talking about creating our folder structure and also creating our very first React component. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. So guys, before we start, I actually want to say that what we're building is a somewhat like a to-do app. Okay, I'm going to say it's a to-do app, but I'm going to call it a bucket list app because there's no reason. I'm just, calling it, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just calling it a bucket list app. A bucket list app. Uh, it's exactly like a, uh, a to-do app, but um, yeah, everybody just keeps on saying to-do app, so I'm going to just say a bucket list app. And this bucket list app, you're going to be able to add in things add or remove things you've already done or want to do and also it's going to have a ra randomizer button where when you click on it it'll just choose one for you so <clears throat> yeah that's what we're going to be building so i want to start off with building a or adding or creating a folder project folder so i created a project folder mine is called react bucket list app we call it whatever you want and in here when you open Visual Studio Code or whatever, just go to File, Open Folder, and open the folder of the folder you just created. Inside this folder, we're going to create another folder called the Public Folder. And this is where we're going to add all of our things that we want to serve to the internet. So we want to create a file in the Public Folder called index.html. And in here we're going to create a simple HTML thing. And I'm just name mine the bucket list app. That's it. And in here we're going to just say exactly the same thing with an H1, I guess. bucket list app control save now we're going to install globally a package called live server now if you don't know what a live server is it's basically like nodemon if you don't know what nodemon is it's basically every time you make a change in here it'll automatically save it and spit it out live you'll see what i'm talking about so we need to open up our command prompt just navigate to wherever you have that um, folder we're going to do yarn init and you know just just enter through everything right now and we just created a package.json then we're going to do npm install dash g live dash server all right, why are we using NPN instead of Yarn? Well, Yarn has, I'm gonna say, technical difficulties with actual global variables or global packages. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And I don't want this where, I don't want it to be in a comment section where it's like, it's not working for me. So we're just using NPM, which is pretty great at doing global packages. So just press enter. Since we're starting this globally, it doesn't matter if we save it to the package.json right now. I just did that just in case. It is not. There we go. It, it's installing it globally. Let's wait for it. All right. Now that we have that, we're going to do live server. And then we want to aim at the folder we want to spit out live. So the folder that we want to spit out live or run through the internet is the public folder. This public folder, like I said, is going to have everything that we want. Um, to see on the client side so live server public since we're aiming for the public folder once you do that a what to call a uh, tab should open on its own with the file name right here now check this out if i actually save this bucket list app dot 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 getting started and save it See that it automatically refreshes it and gets it right here. That's what I meant about uh, updating live, I guess. So now that we have that, let's build out our very first React component. So to get started with the component, we do need a couple of scripts. 
I'm gonna copy and paste this from the React document. Um, right, I guess you put it right here. It doesn't really matter. Let me just move this, move this a little bit more, so that way we get the full view. So let me explain what's going on uh, with these two things. Um, <clears throat> So React, this first one, React, is just going to load in the React components, the React library. Now, React DOM slash DOM this is going to help us uh, manipulate things in the DOM, I guess, for the website. Now, there's different types of React. There's React VR for virtual reality. There's also React Native for mobile. We're using React DOM to manipulate things for the web, all right, for the internet, for the web, internet, for the web. <clears throat> so we do need these two scripts and we're going to add one more in and this is going to be oops i'm not used to this let's create one more copy this just paste it down here and it's going to be our custom uh js file so in our root folder scripts slash app dot js now obviously we don't have scripts right now or app.js, we are going to create it. So inside our root folder, every time you see this, or every time you hear someone say the root folder, and if you're messing with the web application, they're meaning the pub. They mean the public folder. So within the public folder, we're going to create a scripts folder. Scripts folder, and inside scripts, we're going to create a new file called app.js. So now we have it right here, and this is where we're going to create our React application, or our React component. So we do have to check. Let me just save this first. Let's check first if the React and React DOM components actually did load. If you just inspect your uh, web page, go to console. We're going to type in React. If you hit enter, you should have this object. If you do see this object, that means that React is loaded. And we're going to type in, um, where's this thing? React DOM. And if you see another object, that means that React DOM is also loaded and you're good to go. We're all set. So let's go back here. And let's do a uh, log right here saying running. Just to see if we actually got this thing running. Now we inspect this one more time. You should see running. Awesome. Live, ro live uh, reload enabled, which is our package reinstalled but it says running so this script right here that we have is running let me just shorten this so that way we don't have to mess with this no more all right in here now so inside app.js we are going to create a variable or a const some people are and we're going to create a const of template and we're going to set this equal to an html you might be used to this html of a p paragraph and inside this p paragraph i'm just going to put this is a jsx if you don't know what jsx stands for is literally javascript xml and this is what uh, react runs off of or creates xml J J jsx it creates jsx javascript xml so this is a jsx from app.js control save forgive my semicolon right there now let's render this in our application, okay? So the way we're going to render this is we're gonna use react dom dot render. Now, if you remember react dom, nope, not the dot render. So this actually takes in two arguments. The first argument is what do you want to render? And we already know what we want to render is this template, this P paragraph. So I'm going to just put that in there, template. And the second argument is where do you want to render it in the DOM or in the page? So we're going to go back inside index.html. And inside of here, I'm going to get rid of this. And I'm going to just create a div with, okay, why is there... I'm gonna create a div with an ID called, and you might have seen this in React apps, app. And a div called, a div with an ID called app. 
And actually, I'm going to move this, the, these scripts, down below right here because I don't want them to render, uh, execute before my, my uh, markup language. So let me just put it down here. Control save this. Now we, we're going to grab that ID. So var or const app root is going to equal document dot oh is this why there we go i forgot this backslash closing the p parentheses i mean the p tag anyways we're gonna grab that uh i the app the div app what we're gonna grab the div by saying document dot get element by id and we're gonna grab it by the ID of, well, we named it app, so app. So in here, we wanna render the template, this template, and we're gonna push that template inside the div called app, app root, which is in this case, app root, right? So you do understand, right? So we're rendering this template right here, and we're gonna push that template inside this div, and this div is ID app, which we just named it at root right here hope that makes sense as you see over here once we saved it we do get an error the reason why we get an error if we click on the app.js is because let me get out of right here let me actually move this to the bottom so that way we don't all right the reason why we get an error is because of this it's telling us this all right jsx javascript xml is an extension of the library javascript okay so in any browser it doesn't matter what browser it doesn't know what the hell this is right here it's like what are you trying to tell me i'm like well it doesn't know what this is so we gotta actually tell it how to how to actually compile this we need to tell it we need to compile this to plain old javascript the way the browser needs to understand it and the thing that we're going to use to help us do this is called babel.js.io it's called babel okay let me actually maximize this so that way you know what, what is going on here so this is going to take es6 and above to plain old javascript or anything that the browser understand which is es5 okay it's going to dumb it down as you could say that it's going to dumb it down okay and we could actually try it out right here let's try it out some it's loading okay right here now we all know that console log give me is going to do the same thing as it's it's the same thing right but let's do the thing that we just did right now const template is going to equal and we just made a p paragraph right i'm gonna end it with a p right here and right here we're going to do JSX component and look how it renders it in ES5 right here. Var template equals react.create element p null JXX component. So Babel actually takes in ES6 or in this case JSX and turns it into a function call. As you can see right here, React, we're calling React and we're calling a method create element and inside this we're just pass, passing in the things we want to create so it's actually turning it into a function something that the browser does understand so in this case we, we're, uh, we're calling a create element method the first argument is the tag that we want to use obviously the p the second argument is the attributes argument it's null because we don't have any our arguments our attributes anyways if i put an id right here equals id you're gonna see right here that now we get an ID, an object of stuff, right? That's because I could do a lot more stuff. We could have a uh, class as well equals class. And we're gonna have another class right here. It's gonna be an object of the attributes we have for this tag. And the third argument or, uh, well, yeah, property, the third property 
I think that's what it's called. I'm not too sure. I free, oh my god, I'm I'm running low. I'm running low. The third argument, I'm gonna just say third argument, even though it's not the argument. Yeah, it is. Yes, it is. It's the argument because we're passing something in. Okay. The third, sorry about that, guys. The third argument is the content we want for that paragraph or the, the tag, right? That's basically it. So it, we can write it like this. Honestly, we can. But what's more easier for us? Doing it this way or just writing it out like this, the way we want to write it out? It's doing it this way. That's why we, we use Babel. Now, I know a lot of people that actually do it this way just because they don't want to... Uh, mess around with Babel, but since you want to learn, I'm pretty sure you want to learn, and actually people are hiring, if you do know React, Angular, and also Babel, Webpack, and you know Grunt, and stuff like that, we are going to teach you these kind of things, so that way you have more of a, um, I guess, leg up on the competition for whoever's trying to get hired, right? Now you know Babel. We're going to get into that. You're welcome. So you're probably wondering, how are we going to do this now, now that we need Babel? Well, <laughs> we're not going to do Babel in this video. In the next video, we are going to install and configure Babel. Dude, Babel could be its own series, literally. Babel is a monster on its own, and you could create a whole new series off of this. I probably will, because Babel is pretty hot, and it's what well, we need it if you're using React or anything else. We do need Babel. But for now, Rick, I'm just going to copy this minimize this and replace this the template with the one the create element method okay so if we actually run it now control save this now if you actually run it right here oh uh, I misspelled document document Control save. Let's see, right there, JSX component. Let me put this inside. Now I've actually changed this to new JSX. Control save. You'll see that it renders right here just like it would. All right, guys, that is it. We just set up our project. Sorry about that. We set up our project structure or folder structure. And also we set it up. We created our very first React component by doing the react.createElement method. Um, in the next video, though, we are going to amplify what? We're going to add in Babel so that way we could just start writing our template like the way we had it with a P paragraph, whatever, whatever, whatever. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a like, comment down below. And if you haven't, please consider subscribing. And I wanna thank you guys for taking time out of your day to watch this video. I know you're probably a busy man or a gal, uh, but thank you so much for actually watching my videos. And stay tuned, I, it's gonna get a lot more interesting than this. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.